<laughs> yeah, crazy to know. Okay, here we go, people. This Hold on one lie. second. I'll, I'll let y'all know. Hold on. Once I go in. I'll let y'all know. Hold on. Once I go in. One second. I'll let y'all know. Hold on. Brother Mallet, you got an echo, bro. Could you please close your microphone? It's because our mics are open. We're actually. No, that was me. That was all me. Hold on one second. That was all me. Allow me to open in the name of Allah, the beneficent, the most merciful, the one God who came in the person of Master Fahd Muhammad, the great Mahdi. I forever give thanks to Allah for his intervention in our affairs and raising one from among our midst of the caliber of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. I continue to thank Allah and his messenger for recognizing the gaping wound we sustain here in the hells of North America by our wide open enemy, the Caucasian skunk of the planet Earth. The man I speak of is none other than Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, who is the Messiah in these days and time that Jay Gahuba told us with the COINTELPRO to stop the rise of a Black Messiah who can electrify and unify the warlike propensities of Black people. Well, you know the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is the only one who fits that description at this particular time. So it is in their names that I greet you in the greeting words of peace. We say it in the Arabic language of assalamu alaikum. To all of the to all of the Facebook family out there who anticipate hearing the uncut, raw, unadulterated truth that is hurled at falsehood till it knocks out its brains. My war is not with you, black man. My war is not with you, black woman. My war is with that devil who has came in a straight path that it is spoken about in the Holy Quran, Surah 2, and took control of the kingdom. So now he's on a throne in your dome and in my dome and all our domes. So we have to wage war against that enemy that got us doing contrary to what is instructed by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. I'll show you in no limited time that we are doing contrary. The animal, most honorable Muhammad said, our sole purpose is to deliver the 17 million dead to the Lamb of God, now 40 million. I show you that Satan has taken over your kingdom. How many people you brought to the mosque last week? I hear crickets. How many people have you brought to the mosque in the last month? How many people have you brought to the mosque in the year? If you're not bringing one person to the mosque a week, which will be 52 people in a year, because it's 52 weeks in a year, then Satan has gained control of the kingdom right here and snuffed out the God within us to make us effective, to make the things happen like we say we're supposed to make it happen. So this is why we hurl truth at falsehood till it knocks out his brains. So don't get sensitive when we beating the devil up in you. I hope you all enjoy the dialysis layout that we have for you because you're gonna take these, this dialysis one way or another. May Allah continue to bless you, enjoy. Sister Sandra, let's kick off. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Rahim. Ia can no bodu, Ia can a stay. Ek then a serotum bustaki. Answer out a Latina and no amta a lay him. Where am I do be a lay him? Walla do. Uh, 
الله اكبر الله اكبر الله اكبر we'll be right with you all thank you Salutations, prayer and fasting family. Meet your administrative team. These are the people working behind the scenes to ensure that the presentation runs as smoothly as possible. If you're contacted by someone on the admin team, we are trying to collect and store your contact information properly. Please answer the call. In addition, and whenever necessary, Zoom participants may be muted or placed in the waiting room. In that case, feel free to continue watching the presentation on our Facebook page, as we will be streaming this event live. In addition to our Facebook page, we also have a Twitter page, a YouTube page, an Instagram page, and a TikTok page. Our effort is to ensure that we reach as many of our people as possible, to share with them these two powerful and life-changing tools, prayer and fasting. Won't you help us get the word out? Ready? Take a picture or a screen capture. Share them. And be sure to join us on each of our social media platforms. Thank you. Now, enjoy the presentation. Sister Lisa. Assalamu alaikum, family. Wa alaikum salam, Wa alaikum I'm your sister Lisa, and I've been asked to introduce a video that I um, was inspired to make after listening to last week's um, lecture by our brother Abdul Malik. And um, the video is basically explaining what I have found to be true, and so many of the believers here who are fasting. I am moving into my 80th week of praying and fasting. Allah Allah to Allah. 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 Yes, sir. And I have discovered that I am no longer fasting. I have made a lifestyle change for life. That's so, right. Please enjoy this video. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Wa alaikum salam. Oh, praise and speak to Allah. Well, you know, we we got a hot topic today. You don't want to miss this. Meet us on Zoom Thursday and Sunday, 7.30 p.m. Central Time. For Zoom info, call or text 818-614-1902. That's 818-614-1902. So happy that you guys enjoyed the flyer for today, but that is not the commercial. If you if you give me um control of the screen, I can play the commercial. Right. Yes, ma'am, please. That was not it. One second. All yes, praises be to Allah. That was an excellent video. One second. Let's click the link. Let's click the link. Thank you all for bearing with me. How y'all doing tonight? Y'all look so beautiful, family. 
We're happy you all could be with us. Thank you for coming out. Thank you, beloved. Praises be to Allah. Here we go. Come on with me. Praise be to Allah. One second, just a technical switch. Be right with you. We appreciate your patience, family. Here we go. Oh, oh praises be to Allah. Well, you know, we we got a hot topic today. You should look in the mirror because yes, you're young does not make you exempt from being on a dialysis machine. So many people come to me and ask me, hey, what's on your arm? Why does your arm look lumpy and disfigured? Well, I'd rather have it disfigured knowing that I am actually living time. Because those that are on dialysis are on dialysis most of the time for years at a time waiting for a kidney transplant. So in the meantime, they need a way that they're able to clean the blood and take out all the toxins and the excess water. So the first needle pulls the blood out so they're able to clean it, run it through the machines. And the next needle is where the blood returns in. So we need two spots and we need the vein big enough to deal with that blood flow. So that's why it takes so long for it to mature. So there's a cut right here. I'm not sure if you guys can see, I have a little cut right here. This is where they tie the artery and the vein together. You saw it, I saw it. Is that not a beautiful woman? Yes, sir. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Yes, sir. In, yes, in sir. her early 20s. In her oh, early 20s. Wow. Low has hands. to tie an artery and a vein together into a knot or whatever. Whatever it was, they had to tie it together just so that she could cleanse her blood out. She said Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, she got to go for four hours. Four hours on a Monday. She eats Monday night. She eats Tuesday all day. She's back over there cleansing what she ate from Monday to Tuesday out with a machine. Now, the question is this, which dialysis do you want to take? You in the valley of decisions right now. Because you're going to take one or the other, whether you like it or not. Because your blood is polluted. And it's just a matter of time before it run its course and you be the next next contestant and you ask me why I fast every day, every day, every week. Because I don't want the toxics in my blood to affect me to the point it shuts down my kidneys. Shuts down my liver, starts shutting down my organs. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? Do you want that to happen to you? And you got no, control of no, that? Sir. No, sir. So you, so you want to rush yourself to the plate every day, every three times a day, with chips at the gas station, a Gatorade, or uh, and all kinds of little sips and juices? You know, bag of some, some some chewy gums and, and and all kinds of Snickers and you know how you like it and I like it don't act brand new your body is polluted too the question is what are you going to do to resurrect yourself so, 
That's awesome. Brother Saladin, seven X. Salam alaikum, family. Alaikum salam. Salam, sir. I am Brother Saladin, seven X from the NYC, and I have the pleasure to go before you, just to tell you a little about our prayer and fasting. I am a brother that's been with praying fast for over 80 weeks. And I have 80 <laughs> weeks. <laughs> I have 80 <laughs> weeks of successful praying and fasting. I used to suffer from diabetes real bad. I tried everything in the world to get off the diabetes. Nothing was worked until I joined this amazing family under the leadership of Brother Abdul Malik. And once I began to pray and fast, I no longer have diabetes to do not have to take medicine anymore. Allah so, Akbar. All praise Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. So one of the most important things that we want to speak about tonight, because this topic about the dialysis machine is so significant because it reaches across all boards whether you Muslim, Christian, Hebrew, young, old, it doesn't matter. So many our, and you just saw the young sister, so many young people this day is getting on this dialysis machine, which is taking the life force out of people slowly. See what's happening to this day and time is that when our enemy, our slave master, go and shoot down an innocent kid or young person in the street, there's an uproar. When you hear black on black crime, a gangbanger shoot a gun and then 11 year old child get hit in the back of the head and die, there's an uproar. But our enemy, our slave master figured out a way that he can kill us by the millions more than people who's getting killed by gun violence, by killing us slowly. That is so unnoticeable by the poison food that we are eating every day. So by us eating these poison food, we are suffering from diabetes, high cholesterol, high um, um, blood, um, high, I'm, I'm blood sorry. Pressure. Blood pressure. Yeah. Blood pressure. Yeah. Thank you. And all these things is killing us very slowly. So this is what our slave master had came up with the technique. So in the video you just saw that this young sister in her 20s have to go get her blood cleansed four times out of the week. And millions of our people are suffering from this. So we have two machines in front of us. A negative machine, the dialysis machine, the negative one, and the positive one, which is prayer and fasting, which has helped me with my diabetes, helped brothers over here that had cancer, people with high blood pressure, um, low self-esteem, overweight. That machine, that dialysis machine is cleaning and, and bringing people to good health based on what the Honorable Light Muhammad taught us that prayer and fasting especially fasting, can cure 90% of all diseases. So family, this is so devastating because it's affecting so many people in our community. So we are begging and pleading with our people to choose the machine that you find is best for you. And the only one best for you is the prayer and fasting machine. You don't want to be on that machine. Did you hear what the sister said? how painful it is to have that thick needle taking the blood out, running through a machine, 
and then that blood coming back through a thick needle back into your body. I know family members that when they come back, all their life force is out of them. They are drained. You see them like, it's just the skin color just starts change, changing. You see death just coming out of them. So that's why this is so important to us. And we are begging our family members to please come to prayer and fasting. Why not try it? Anytime you go to the doctor, I don't care if they black, white, Asian, if they have a white jacket on, you listen to anything they tell you to do. You take any experimental drug, you get on any dollar machine right away, but you won't come to pray and fast and try that out to control your discipline because all these diseases I just mentioned come from the bad habit of the food that we eat. Brother Abdul Mal explained to us last Thursday that every time you open up a bag, any type of bag or any type of can, whether it's a bag of Doritos, a Snickers, or even a bag of vegetable, there's a little bit of cancer in every bag and every jar that is killing us slowly, that's going to make us a candidate for the Dallas machine. So why not come to pray and fast and try that out before it gets too devastating like the people that we see on that machine where their life energy is drawn out. And I'm going to close on this note. The most honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, when he first found out that he was sick, he went to Mexico and his doctor told him, and Minister Farrakhan said what the doctor told him was so profound. He said, Minister Farrakhan, you have a thief in your house. And if you don't do something about it, that thief will turn into a murderer. A murderer. So we thank Allah that the thief did not turn into a murderer for the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. But each and every one of us have that thief in us. If you have diabetes, you have high blood pressure, if you overweight, if you have cholesterol problem, any of these things, a thief is in your house. And before you allow that thief to become a murderer, come and join the prayer and fasting. Because the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, fasting will cure 90% of your disease. Assalamu alaikum, family. Thank you. And, and family, without further ado, I want to bring on a brother, Brother Abdul Malik. You see, like I told you earlier, I was fasting, I was praying, but I never combined them together. So when he met me on the road of despair, he gave me a tool that was given to him and he found great success with it. He received a name from the Honorable Minister Louis Farrell and he received gifts. He received all types of money, accolades and everything. But the brother did not keep it to himself. He started this Zoom platform with thousands of people is now learning the technique of prayer and fasting. He is considered to us the Good Samaritan. Because when I was on that broken road, he came along and he started putting the oil in my head and telling me, brother, start praying and fasting. And I guarantee you, you will have success. And success came to me. He could have kept that to himself, but he shared it with the world. And that's why he is so hard on everybody. He want to help save our people. He want to do the work because his name means servant to the king. He's a servant to the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and his mission, delivering everyone to Allah God for success. So that's why if you think he's being difficult, but the ones who was difficult with you is the one who loves you the most. That's the ones who care about you the most. The one who don't say nothing about you, what you're doing wrong, that's the person that don't give a damn about you. But this brother loves you. So without further ado, I want to bring on Abdul Malik the founder of Prayer and Fasting, the foundation to success. As-salamu alaykum. Wa alaykum salam. Before we do that, um, Brother Saladin, I was asked to introduce another video. Um, yes, ma'am, I apologize, sister. I got no caught worries. in the motion. <laughs> no, <laughs> no worries, it was um, last minute. Um, As-salamu alaykum, family. 
Well, um, salam, um, Sister Sandra, and um, just wanted to uh, put the fact out there that not only do we pray and fast, um, this will be my 106th week of um, fasting, praying and fasting. Not only do we pray and fast here, we also try to make an impact um, around the world and try to make our word bond, you know, with Master Farah Muhammad. So let me show you a quick video of what it is we actually do in prayer and fasting. Thank you. Brother Abdullah, the floor is yours, sir. Oh, praises be to Allah. Allow me to open in the name of Allah, the beneficent, the most merciful, the one God who came in a person, the master of Fahd Muhammad, the great Mahdi. I forever give thanks to Allah for his intervention in our affairs and raising one from among our, um, our midst of the caliber of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. And I continue to thank Allah for the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, who is the Messiah in these days and time. I greet you in the greeting words of peace of as alaikum. Wa alaikum salam, sir. Sister Majida, Brother Saladin 7X, Sister Sandra, and all the administrative team, give them a warm round of applause. 
Y'all know they putting this together. Oh, wow. Wow. Bahu Akbar. Bahu Akbar. You know, this is a uh, man. This is deep. This is deep, but we working on. You know, and we not here to preach to you because I'm not your preacher, man. That's not me. I don't like. The, I don't even like it. I don't like to be titled that. There's not, it's, it's just not a title that's an effective title. You'll preach a man. Preach a man is synonymous, synonymous of crook. So I don't want you put me nowhere near that. Don't you make no mistake because you're going to get cussed out. Talking about some good creep preacher, a reverend, a minister. Don't call me that. I don't ask y'all for a dollar. Everybody, thousands of people who come through here, I never ask you for a quarter because I don't want to be a pimp, a player, a hustler, a money changer. I don't want no parts of that. So I deal with you from straight from the, the hip when it comes down to the life-giving teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. I call you out here about dialysis because I know that the number one killer amongst black people is heart disease. If I asked you to raise your hand in this audience alone, how many of y'all had high blood pressure? And I did it before and 85% of us had it. 85%. Y'all yeah, sir. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So I don't want you to raise your hand, but I'm just saying, if I asked you, you would have it. But the main thing we want to do is deal with the valley of decisions. Right now, you can see me. That's what you make your judgment on, what you can see. But you're going to have to have something else in order for you to affect the cure. And that's the all-seeing eye that you don't see me through. And if you don't have the all-seeing eye, you ain't going to get none of the messages. You're going to be a statistic. And the reason why we pray and fast is because that's the key to unlock the rusty lock that opens the unseen eye that lets you see beyond what your physical eyes can see. This is why we pray and fast. The sister Lisa said earlier, we don't pray and fast. Y'all fasting. You're a gamer. You're a freaking gamer, bro and sister we don't fast we live our life and just like we wake up and we go to bed we have times of the week that we eat and times of the week that we don't you call it fasting we don't it's a way of life over here oh, so yes. get off so get off get off of your fasting days because that's not the way we roll over here. Consider us a snake who eats once a month or a camola who eats once a month or big reptiles who don't eat all day. They're not fasting. It's just their way of life. So this reptile right here at the height highest level of the animal kingdom. We eat certain times of days and certain times of the day we don't eat. You call it fasting because you gain it. We don't gain. We started off fasting until the sixth sense got opened up and we wide open black men and women over here now. So we roll like this. It's not fasting time. It's just a way of life. So we pass your fasting judgment. You can deal with the fasting judgment personally. But over here, all we're trying to do is kill Satan in your kingdom. Because he's there. You don't believe he's there. If you're a Christian and you don't bring guests to your mosque to raise the dead, 
then Satan got you in prison that hinders your ability to get it done. If you MGT or FOI, you don't bring people to the mall. I brought one. In 52 weeks, you brought one. And it's 52 showings and you only brought one. Don't tell nobody that. Don't ever mention it. If you bought 15 guests and it's 52 weeks in a year, don't you mention it. Don't you mention that. Don't you depreciate what we represent like that. You, you, you bet not because it makes you look bad. It makes the people around you don't want to come in. Because all the power that you can yield is one, two, five, 15 out of the whole year. And it's 52 weeks. Why well, I want to be a part of that. Why well, I want to be a part of that. You don't want that. But I tell you what. Um, brothers on here that's suffering from dialysis. We got a brother on here who. Who worked in the dialysis treatment center. For seven years. He knows the good, the bad, and the ugly. It's so, it's so, it's so, it's so critical right now that you're in the valley of decisions now. Either you're gonna go with the dialysis that God gave you, prayer and fasting, to cleanse your bloodstream out of all the toxins that you don't give your body a break. For. You know, you eat all day and eat all night and you never miss a day. That's one thing what black people can say we consistent of, and that is eating. If you ain't consistent with nothing in your life, you consistent with eating. You're an eater. Sickening. But I tell you what, you better save your life. And I'm just hitting you with the watchman peace. Blow that trumpet, oh watchman, and get their blood off your hand. But that's personal. It's irrelevant and immaterial. Because I don't even know who you are if you don't like me. That's fine with me. Because you just Iblis if you don't like me. You're not Satan. Because Iblis is one whose wickedness is confined to himself and doesn't affect others. But Satan is one whose wickedness is not just confined to himself, but affects others. So Allah kept you from being Satan and let you just be a bliss, not liking Malik in your sacred place. But Malik don't know you don't like him, so you don't have to be Satan in this manner. You can resurrect yourself from being just a bliss. Is that all right? Yes, sir. Oh, yes, praise sir. be to Allah. Yes, sir. So what I want to do, hmm, man, did y'all see the minister speak yes, at sir. the dojo? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All that? Beautiful. Amazing. Yes, he The is. minister is speaking. He's my compass. Did y'all hear what I just said? That's right. Yes. That's right. Yes, oh, sir. Yes. The oh, minister oh, is my yardstick. That's he right. He's my GPS. When I hear him speak, whether he calls me or not, is irrelevant and immaterial. He already told me that the kingdom of God is within you. He's already told me to seek refuge in Allah and yourself, Malik. So what do I need to call my minister for? What do I need to hear from him for? I don't. If he does, all praises be to Allah. That's a blessing. If he doesn't, that's a blessing too. Because what he's given me over these 30 years is a navigational system that I need no more guidance other than what Allah inside of me will guide me to. Allah. Do you yes, understand sir. what I'm Allah. saying? Yes, sir. So please, please, the validation. I yes. don't need no help. I don't need no accolade. I don't need nobody to endorse. I will chase down the fish and get the coin out of the fish's mouth, as I've done thus far. I wouldn't be the top fisherman in the nation of Islam had I not been able to catch the fish. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. 
all praises be to Allah. So for all of you who like to eat until you die, I'm going to bring a brother on. I'm going to bring a brother on. His name is Brother Malcolm X. There you go. Big Malcolm. Oh, praises be to Allah. Brother Malcolm, I'm a, I, I'm 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 pro state litigant. You know, I come out of the you know the the you know how the old penitentiary attorney, you know, penitentiary attorney. I'm, I'm I come out of that atmosphere, and I was always a legalist. So I want to ask you a few questions, brother, that we can enlighten some of the brothers and the sisters that across America, because you're gonna have thousands of people watching this video in just a few. Okay. So I'm gonna ask you some questions. And then you give it to the people that are listening. They'll listen and then they'll be able to take it and splice it and take what's good and leave what's not. Now, okay. are, are you currently on dialysis? Yes, sir. First yes, off, sir. I want to give everyone the greetings. I saw them y'all. Wow, like I'm so like that. Tell them your name too, brother. Yes, I'm uh, currently on di dialysis and I'm going to be very honest with all of you. It's starting to drive me crazy. They know, they know at a certain point in your life, you're gonna get tired of this treatment. And that's when you're just about the end of your life. So they already know how much you, your body can take. And um, I'm at that wit's end right now. I need uh, either a transplant, um, because my body just can't take the dialysis anymore. I'm tired of the needles. Uh, it's very cold inside of there and they know it. And the people, it's not the people that work there. It's the people who own the Davidas. They're mainly, they're mainly Caucasian people and the Davidas are mainly put in black neighborhoods. I don't know if you guys have been paying attention to that, but it is a war on us with this dialysis and food and heart disease and kidney disease. It's a war on us. Can you all hear me good? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So uh, I'm just here, brother, trying to get some last minute life lessons before this disease, you know, takes me out of here. And I still want to enjoy myself. You know, I'm in a nation of Islam, no wife, no kids. I want to enjoy that stuff. But this disease, it puts a, 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 a damper on your life and your moods, and they know this. So we have to do something different when it comes to this eating, and I don't really know. So me hearing about fasting, the way brothers uh, putting it, I never heard of it like that. Fast so you can fast your way away from disease. Never looked at it like that. So. I'm going to be giving it a shot, brother. Praises be to Allah. Oh, oh praises be to Allah. 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 Let me, yes. let me ask you a couple of questions. How long have you been in the ranks? I've uh, been in the ranks now about eight years. Eight years. How long yes. have you had diabetes? How long have you had the uh, um, dialysis treatment? Um... I got I, I got started on dialysis right when I came in the nation. Um, I, I didn't even know I had kidney disease. Um, to the point where when I was urinating, uh, how you know your kidneys are bad, your, your, your urine starts to look like milk. And that's what I thought it was milk. But no, my kidneys were failing rapidly. Brother, and sisters, all it was growing up as a black person in the hood, we were introduced to a slave master's diet and didn't know it. Come on now. Eating the grits and the sugar and the butter and the bacon in the morning and the and the biscuits, the you know, the the pork chops for dinner, the fries, mm -hmm. you know. We they called it soul food. Mm okay to eat it every now and again but we made a diet out of it and that was due to our slave masters in introducing us to it 
and it made us sick. And we've been mm. sick for centuries. Mm. And it's mm. so mad, I'm mad as hell that it got me. Mm -hmm. You know, I wish I'd have known what I know now, you know, 10, 15 years ago. Praise be to Allah. So, you know what, brother, brother, brother Malcolm? Yes, sir. Even though you just now learning it, we're gonna fight to overcome it because yes. we're problem solvers. And that's, that's why right. we meeting up in this manner because right. that can be reversed. Yes, that's sir. Totally. Oh, who All I we want. gotta do is oh, follow oh. This, the, the how to eat to live to the letter and do the extreme. The extreme is what we're doing. I'm at 146 weeks that I've completed fasting 72 to 96 hours a week, and I never missed. And I'm 52. Well, sometimes, brother, when I fast, Since, I get drastically sick. Uh, and right I, now, you don't want to fast like we fast because you're already in a boiling pot dealing with the things that you've been going through. So we're going to do it in degrees. So that you can catch it right when you feel your illness, you can shut it down. But as you keep, it's almost like working out. When we first start working out, we're not popping 315. We no. start off with a plate. And okay. as time marches on, we be two plates. And as time marches on, we got three plates. So you don't want to just jump into it like Abdul Malik. Man, Abdul Malik been in the gym for three years. When it comes to fasting and praying. Yeah, brother, y'all. You know? Y'all call the ambulance for old brother Malcolm. <laughs> hey, man. You know? I'll be getting up in the morning, brother, and I'll be like, man, why is my knees, you know, here I'm, I'm very athletic, but now that I'm getting older, everything is just failing. You know, yeah. I hate And you like said it best. Malcolm, you said it best. You gave the answer to the fail. Is the okay. slave food that we've been given by those we love the best, and that's mama and grandma. Oh my See, God. Mama and grandma was 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 given it by the slave master and taught to give it to us yes. so he can perpetuate the disease. Yes. And I had one of them old southern mamas, boy. She would every, everything she cooked was big pots of everything. If it was crawfish, she had. Thousands of crawfish she put in a, 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 a pot. I wouldn't eat them, but my brothers and sisters would tear them things up. Mm -mm. Nah. Yes, sir. I ain't eat yes, no crawfish. Sir. Yes, sir. Nope. I'm going to add somebody in right quick, brother. Hold on one second. Where is brother uh, Jacoby? Is, are you yes, there, sir. brother Jacoby? Yes, sir. Uh, He's here. I'm, yes, I'm bringing... sir. Brother Jacoby, come on in for a minute. Can you I'm brother. Jacoby. Wa Waalaikum salam. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yeah, I hear you very, yes, very sir. well, brother. Good to see you, brother Jacoby. Yes, yes sir. sir. Brother yes, Jacoby, sir. I'm gonna ask you some specific questions right quick, and uh, I'm um, and I want you to answer these questions. You've worked in a dialysis center before. I, I do it currently, right now. Yes, sir. All right. Beautiful. How long have you been doing that? About seven years. About seven years. So you know the good, the bad, and the ugly of that as that atmosphere. Yes, sir. Okay, I'm gonna ask you I this: What's the good? Ain't no. of the dialysis situation. The good thing about a dialysis situation is, for someone who has kidney failure, um, if they don't receive dialysis within a certain period of time, they can be dead between two to three weeks. A person that, a person with dialysis, a person with kidney failure has to have dialysis in order to excrete and release toxins from the body. Another point, a person with dialysis over a period of time lose the ability to completely, to uh, lose the ability to not even urinate where they don't pee anymore. And so all of the fluid is collected in, uh, collected all over their body and you see swelling all over their body from their face to their legs. And so dialysis allows us to remove those toxins as and well as waste from the body and fluid. Mm. 
Beautiful. Okay. Got it. So a person who ends up with, with uh, kidney failure, if they don't get to a dialysis treatment center, they can be dead in three weeks? Yes, sir. Absolutely. Because in your body, in your body, you have what we, we, have, we have what we refer to as electrolytes. And those mm -hmm. electrolytes are excreted through your urine or through when you defecate. One of the most important electrolytes that we often have to watch is the electrolyte potassium. If you are not able to excrete potassium via your urine over a period of time, then the blood builds up toxins of the potassium, which goes beyond a normal limit and it can cause you to have a heart attack and die. The second part of it is if you cannot pee adequately, then your body continues to retain that fluid means that the heart now has to pump harder because the body is filled up with more fluid. And so now the heart can give out and have what we call a heart attack. Wow. Wow. And so if they don't have so dialysis, also if they don't have dialysis when the two to three weeks span, they can have a massive heart attack and die. As well as on top of that, <laughs> when they're not able to excrete <laughs> those toxins via the urine, those toxins build up and continue to circulate in the blood and goes into different parts of the brain where that person becomes really confused, really agitated, as well as loss of memory loss. Mm, mm, mm. Now, the good thing he said about dialysis is that it could save your life. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't get it, it'll kill you in a moment of time two to three weeks, you'll be out of here. Now, what's the bad of it? The bad thing about dialysis is that it kills you, but it kills you slowly over a period of time. Because with the dialysis machine, the dialysis machine is constantly removing the blood via what we call a dialyzer. We, once the blood goes through the dialyzer, it removes the toxins, it eliminates the waste, and it also gives you that blood back. However, in that process, in the process of removing fluid, we are reducing what, what is referred to as your blood value. Your vessels in your body act as like a highway and your organs act as exit points in order for those vessels to drop off blood to those organs. And so once your blood volume has been decreased in an attempt to clean your body, that, that low blood volume does not allow your body to carry oxygen to those organs. Once those vital organs is not able to get the amount of oxygenation that it needs over a period of time, uh, over a period of time, those organs begin to die all over the body. Mm -hmm. So that's the bad. I don't even want to know what the ugly is. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yes, sir. Wow. Yeah. The ugly part, I don't know if you asked me that, but the ugly part yes. about all of this is that hmm, you can go into any dialysis clinic in America, and I can honestly say to you that maybe 90% of them are Black people, right? Mm -hmm. You can go to any most dialysis clinic in America, and most of the patients don't even understand the dialysis process, and they don't even understand why they are, on, why they are even on dialysis. A lot of our brothers and sisters who are on dialysis comes because their health care professional did not proper, properly adequately educate them on the complications and risk factors associated with their chronic illness. For example, no one told my patients that because they had hypertension, which is high blood pressure, that it could lead to kidney failure. Nobody told a lot of my clients that if they ate uh, if they were a type two diabetic, your diabetes could potentially lead you uh, down the path of dialysis. A lot of our brothers and sisters have no knowledge of uh, that of these complications of chronic disease. The number two causes of people to have kidney failure, or what we what is referred to as end stage renal disease, is hypertension and diabetes. Mm. And a lot of our brothers and sisters don't do not know that. However, um, from my experience with dialysis, some of the worst diabetes is one of the worst diseases on the planet. Mm -hmm. Diabetes 
not only destroys your kidneys, but it destroys your eyeballs, where you, it, you lose the ability to see. Diabetes will begin to interfere with the flow of blood to the vital organs or to your lower extremities where they start cutting pieces of off pieces of you off at a time. And so uh, most mm -hmm. of the young people that are in their 20s or 30s that are on dialysis, it is due to a lot of them are diabetics. Now, you have what is referred to as type 2 diabetics and type 1 diabetics. The people who are type 1 diabetics are born with the inability for their pancreas to secrete insulin. There is a defect in their pancreas. So these individuals have a lifelong dependency on insulin. But as the most honorable Elijah Muhammad said, that with a proper diet and the proper way of eating, that, that, that the sugar could be put under control. Also, right. with the type 2 diabetics, most people become type 2 diabetics, not because they're born that way, but because of their eating habits. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Beautiful, brother. Beautiful. Man, you know, so <laughs> fasting and praying is another avenue to cleanse your bloodstream. Is that right? I would agree with that 100% that uh, fasting mm -hmm. and praying uh, is another avenue, but it is not a profitable one for, uh, for the individuals that own the American Renal Association, for the individual that owns the companies called Versinius, mm. for the individual mm. that own the company that's called, called DaVita. Uh, that uh, preventative medic medicine is the enemy of capitalism in terms of healthcare. Come on, man. You know, you spoke about youngsters. You work in this dialysis place. What are some of the youngest dialysis patients you have there i've seen some as 21 22 uh some i think i had a a, a a young man he was about 18 years old mm -hmm. and you said that you know black people only only make up 13 percent of this 350 million people here in america yes sir and you're saying in the dialysis treatment centers that you know about mm -hmm. the majority of them are coming out of that 13 percent yes sir out of the majority of chronic clinics all over america from my experience majority of them are black black people you have a few, and and not watch this and they're not just this man praise be to allah they are black people but they are black american black people come on now mm. now you do have our brothers and sisters from haiti there you do have our brothers and sisters from Jamaica there, but overwhelmingly, the people that are, are on dialysis are Black people born and raised right here in America. Do y'all, I hope Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, I hope you're listening to this. And what are some of the foods that send you rushing to the dialysis center? <laughs> What's interesting during dialysis, many of our patients are not supposed to eat on machines. But if you sit there, when I get a chance to look at my patients and some of them eat on the machines, I see them, a lot of them eating pork rinds while having dialysis. The same foods that led them to having complications in the first place, I see them eating that while on the machine. Many of our. Hold, man, on, hold, hold on. Let me ask you this question because now you, you really got us on this. You mean to tell me? When they're on a dialysis machine that's mm -hmm. sucking blood out of them to purify it through a big tube that's like a machine that is a big kidney machine, mm -hmm. they eating while it's going through their bloodstream? Yes, sir. So they couldn't hold back from eating even when they were on the dialysis machine. They got hungry and wanted to eat more poison. Mm -hmm. Salted vinegar, potato chips, uh, pork rinds. Many of them have big, uh, big fountain drinks of Coca Cola, and they know that they're not supposed to do it. But many of them, just many of them, have this disposition of they've accepted that they are on dialysis, and they've accepted that they're probably not, in their mind that they they don't feel they will ever get off of dialysis. So they, I guess, they want to do <laughs> how they want to do with that. So dialysis to them is 
kind of what fasting is to me. It's just a way of life. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so they'll be eating and drinking while they they know they're not supposed to be doing this while there's stuff coming out your body. Absolutely. You're supposed to take a break so it it have a better effect on you. Absolutely. While it's coming out. Mm -hmm. Knowing that the blood is trying to get down to your digestive system to help the digestive system break down the food while you pulling it out of the bloodstream into a, a machine, they still eat. Absolutely. And what the problem that we face is a lot of our brothers and sisters, after being educated by the dietitian, because what we have to do, we have to remember that we have to regulate these our brothers and sisters' electrolyte levels. We have to do for them what Allah designed the kidneys to do it for itself. And so we even have to regulate how much bicarb in their body how much potassium that in their body, how much magnesium is in their body, how much phosphorus in their body. So constantly, in some cases, once a month, we're getting labs on all of our patients and analyzing their labs to see where they are, where their labs are. And then we ourselves have to make, uh, put things in place to bring their electrolyte level back into standard. Because if we don't do that, the patient could die because of the off balance with the electrolyte level. However, a lot of our brothers and sisters, despite being on dialysis, um, continue to eat foods that they are not advised to eat. A lot, of, a lot of our patients will still eat bananas when they're told they can't eat bananas because of the high potassium there. A lot of our patients, a lot of our brothers and sisters um, continue to have the same diet that led them onto dialysis in the first place, even while on dialysis and even while after they leave dialysis. Mm -hmm. You know what? No, this is very interesting. Brother uh, Jacoby, sister, sister, do you have a commercial? Because I'm not done with Brother Jacoby. Give us a commercial and I want to write down a few things I'm going to ask him about. But this is, this is mind blowing right here. Yes, so, sir. Uh, just give, yes, just give us one more. Let's give him a warm round of applause because he's showing up, giving it up to the oh, black man. Oh, 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 wow. Oh, 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 I'm almost like, I'm um, almost like blown away by it, you know, because uh, these are almost like children. Here's my leader. Come on with the leader. Let's let's hear from the leader. We can't hear it. Can you all hear it? No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. We cannot hear. Mm, mm, mm. And this video here is the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan speaking at Brother Aziz Muhammad's event that he does every year for the martial arts, VSK. Uh, this was in Milwaukee just this past weekend. And uh, it was a, a overwhelming success. Yes, sir. Thanks be to God. He looks good. We're not able to hear him. Let me see. Yeah, come on. Was casting out. Yeah, here. Out of the meeting. And the work of the nation of his we come to the mention naked how you are when you come to us. Where you are, yes, sir. 
I have let him in. Yes, yes sir. sir. Yes, sir. Oh, very Go ahead. Go ahead. Thank you. I'm sure you in my older years, but you have been front of me. Yes, sir. Yes. Sin is against us. Yes, sir. Wickedness is not good. Yes, sir. So when you can let Allah, God, come in, yes. When when you move your tongue, it's His word. Yes, sir. Oh, when you move your hands to teach others how to defend themselves, that's what God has given you. Brother Abdullah Mali, I have to go, brother. Enemies. Do so you have to know how to fight? My phone is dying, y'all. Yes, sir. Come on. But the first war. Come on. Yes, sir. Never say what you can't do. Because you can do anything you wish. Yes, sir. If you will let the mass have you. Right. 
I miss you to see the day. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The rest that you will get when you throw off the sick you. Yes, sir. And strive to become healthy mm. in God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Lord have mercy. Yes, Lord have mercy. Yes, Lord have mercy. But Jesus said it again like this. Mm. He came into the world to free us, cleanse us from our sins. He didn't ask you what your sin is, you don't know what it is. Oh, brother Abdul Malik, you and brother Jacob are on, on mute. Can you unmute yourselves, both of you, please? Thank you. Oh, yeah, I'm talking right here. Y'all heard the brother, y'all heard the, 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 the Messiah giving it to us. He said, yes, when sir. God knocks at your door, all you got to do is let him in. So that when you let him in, you die, he lives. When you speak, he be speaking to a man, through a man, for the benefit of another man. And you will know the difference when you hear the man talking to you because you can feel the spirit of God coming out the black man. He said, but if he knock at your door, I wish it was as easy as somebody knocking at my door now I can just go open it. I wish it was that easy. But it ain't. Allah said I wouldn't even care for you if it wasn't for your prayers. So if you're a three, three prayer a day man, you need to get yourself in order. If you're one day uh, 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 a day prayer, you need to get yourself in order. Because the, the prescribed is five times a day. That's it. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. It says separation is better than prayer. The message is it. That's just a way to stay asleep. Mm, separation is better than prayer. Sure it is. It ain't separation from the white man. Because if you separated from the white man today, you'd be a nigga tomorrow. Mm. Because the leprosy of the white man is what you need to separate from. And that's an internal white man that you have to raise the leprosy out of the mind of the black man in order for the black man to actually be separated. And in that wise, I will agree with the messenger. Separation is better than prayer. Because if you separate the white man from your mind and the God comes in, it is better than prayer. Because it's all in prayer. And that's the medication of prayer that it would dilute that white supremacy in your mind called leprosy. And it dissolves it and allows you to be the God that you is. But you got to put some exercise in to get it. Fasting is hard. It's not easy. That's why a lot of people on dialysis because they don't want to fast. Many of them are destroyed because of the lack of knowledge. They just don't know no better. Like the brother who went before, brother Malcolm X, he said, "I ain't. I come up with with Southern people, and they fed me. I thought these people loved me, and they did. But in the man, in the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king, and the one-eyed man is a white man. If he know you blind, and he can take advantage of you being blind, and he's the one-eyed man, do you really think he's gonna shake you up and make you see? No, I have an advantage over you." So the minister said, when he knocks, if you open the door, you know how weak we are. We can't stop eating as FOI and MGT. We can't stop eating. We, don't, we can, we just don't want to because we're not exercising these life-giving teachings in the manner that it would affect the cure inside of us by killing Satan in us 
And you get mad when a brother like Abdul Malik you pushing the hard line and starting to get you right, bringing brothers on, brother Jacoby Muhammad, brother Malcolm X, different brothers who are suffering from these things. You get mad at us about it because Satan is mad. It's not the you. It's not you who refuse to accept your own and be yourself. It's the white man that's yes, inside of you that got you agitated. So now, man, man, you need to stop this, man. You want above authority. All right, authority lets you be the fool you want to be. Authority is as, is, is as sick as you are. They don't fast and pray either. Your authority. You got me twisted. If you think I'm going to go for the okie doke, the, the, the banana and the truck. <laughs> yeah, wait on me. There's the difference between me and you. Mm. I give it to you the way it is. I'm trying to save your life. And others love you to be where you at. They do your eulogy. Your genasa. You ain't doing mine. Because no, I'm going to live way beyond if I keep these life-giving teachings. Either the teachings are raw and right, or they're not. And it's on us to make manifest. It Jeez. has to be a people. The Quran says in Surah 58, 22, Thou would not find a people who believe in Allah in the latter day, loving those who oppose Allah and his messenger, who don't like fasting, who don't like charity, who don't like praying, who don't like it. Why you don't like it? Because it cramps my habit. I'm a dope fiend when it comes down to jerk chicken. I'm a dope fiend when it comes down to eating once every day or twice a day. I'm a dope fiend of that. So now you got me trying to do something that is not normal to me because the last 16 years or 80 years, I've been eating the way I want to eat. Now you're going to try to impede my project, pro my progress. What you've done if you shown forth me my withdrawals. And when I get my withdrawals, I keep like See. any other dope thing. Any other dope thing, kill you dead. You seen Billy Holiday in, in, in uh, Billy D. Williams and Lady yes, Sings the Blues, but she she had that dope in the bathroom and she said, Oh, daddy, let me get it. Oh, daddy, go on, get out of here, daddy. Oh, daddy, get out of here. He said, Well, hold on, baby, what you doing? Hold on, well, what's this? What's this? Oh, daddy, is you on this? Oh, daddy, look, daddy, just let me go. Come on, daddy, come on, get out of here. He said, No, nah. and he took the dope from me. He had the dope in the hand. She said, Oh, daddy, don't do that to me, daddy. Come on, she had a right there. She said, Daddy, let the, let, the, let the dope go, Daddy. She grabbed the pot, pot and hit the wall. He ducked, bam, hit the wall. He, and he threw the dope on the thing. He said, go on, get the dope. And she took the dope right in front and put the thing on the arm, bit it, and, and started shooting the dope in the arm. She laid out like this. And he said, damn, you will kill me for this stuff. I want you out of here by in the morning. I can't deal with you. You'll kill me for this stuff. That's Lady Sings the Blues. Now I'm talking about you ladies that sing the blues about this food. You want to kill me about telling you about not taking your dope called fried chicken and fried fries. You don't care about Brother J Jacoby coming over here telling y'all about the, 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 the stuff going to kill you and how you do it. You're going to get over there. You're going to get over there with Brother Jacoby in that dialysis center and be on dialysis. And if you got four hours, you're going to have you some Skittles in your hand, looking around and popping them in your mouth all the way around, <laughs> knowing you sucking them out your arm. You a dirty, you a dirty disconnected believer. You're going to be eating because you can't go four hours without eating unless you sleep. Yes, sir. That's just the way it is. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about Malik. I used to be you. It took a hell of a struggle for me to get where I am to be able to do this. That's why I'm. That's why I can talk to you about this stuff with confidence. See, that's why most of them don't talk to you like I talk to you because they weak too. They dope fiends like you. So they got to preach what they got to preach over here. Preach what they got to preach over here. They duck certain stuff. Oh, and they get out of the way because they don't mean and they can't speak with the conviction that Abdul Malik speaks because Abdul Malik practiced what he preached. He's a leader who determines his speed, which determines the pace of the path. So I'm always out front and y'all like, can't beat me at what I do. 
so I can talk to you like this and be on point with it. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Absolutely. Praise be to Allah. Allah Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Y'all heard the minister? The minister said you could be a master physically and do some do and do some fighting. He said, that's cool. You should learn how to fight. You should be great fighters because we in a wilderness in North America. He said, but your real fight and real mastery comes with the mastering itself within, because this is the real fight. The war of Armageddon is not physical. The war of Armageddon is mental. We, we, we struggle not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, the authorities, the wickedness in heavenly realms, in the heavenly realm of this kingdom right here. Do y'all understand? Yes, sir. Yes, if you don't, if you don't get this fight game together by allowing God to come in and you die, you're not gonna be a good fighter. You're gonna be in the dialysis center. You ain't gonna take the other role. It was two roles. One goes to dialysis to cleanse your blood, or one goes praying fasting to cleanse your blood. Ain't no gray. If it was a gray area, you know I'd give it to y'all. Y'all my people. You my family. I would let you take the gray area and just coast on through. But they didn't give us a gray area. It's this way or that way. And the only way you're going to go the right way is if you do what the scripture says. Hmm. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves. The only way you're going to humble yourself is if you fast. Get about it. And pray. You're not going to pray if you ain't going to fast. You ain't going to fast if you ain't going to pray. It's duality. You can't have one without the other because you'll get turned off on one doing one or the other one doing one. You got to do them together. And turn from your wicked ways. You can't turn away from no wicked ways if you're not praying and fasting. You can't turn away from it. It's an addiction. It's social, social engineers that put things in play for us to be addicted to it. And next thing you know, you call him a dope fiend, but you chasing every girl in the neighborhood having sex with all of them. But you ain't a dope fiend, though. And the first time the one you like cut you off, you're going to try to kill her and then commit suicide and blow your brains out. And it shows that you was a dope fiend too, just on a different level. Turn from your wicked ways. You got to turn, Black man. We got the Messiah on deck. You won't turn, man. It's, and it's very depressing to me. Turn from your wicked ways. And hear, and he will hear from heaven. Where is heaven at? You still think heaven in the sky, man. You still think you're on a sweet by and by. You still think like the white man. You knew heaven is inside of you. Jesus told you that the kingdom of God is not something that you detect with your careful observation of things like here it is over there or there it is up there. For the kingdom of God is within you. So he will hear from heaven right here in your kingdom. The minister just said, that the God, if you knock, he'll come into you. You will die. He'll have your hands and your mouth. When they hear you speak, they'll be speaking. He'll be speaking for you. But you've got to turn from your wicked ways or you're going to be too weak to fight off the food. You'll catch diabetes, heart attacks, strokes, and everything else. You get your toes cut off, your fingers cut off. How do I know? I saw my cousins. They cut all this stuff off and then killed it. I said, man, this is bliss God. You cut toes, ankle, foot, leg, thigh, and then killed it. Hey, I witnessed it all. Then killed the other one, then nut cut off, just foaming at the mouth on my couch. Diabetic coma. You ain't going to struggle for your life. Y'all got to be kidding me, man. In James 14, he says, humble yourself before the Lord and he will exalt you. 
Gotta humble yourself. You can't humble yourself without praying and fasting. Man, we took we too cocky. You ain't gonna be able to do it. In Numbers 6:27, he says, So they shall put my name on the Israelites, and I will bless them. He can't bless you. You got my says your name. You got an X on your name, and some of y'all got Jesus on your name. And you won't even do better than a name. You like the name. You may as well just tattoo it on your arm if you ain't going to do nothing. Just get the tattoo, bro. They do it in the penitentiary all the time. Pat it up. Got the star and crescent on his arm, but he don't pray. He don't fast. He don't fish. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sister Alize, you had a question for my brother. I want oh, you yes. to ask that question. You ready, Jacoby? Yes, sir. Ask him the question, sister. Um, last year, my son um uh, got diagnosed with type one diabetes. He was in a coma because we didn't. I didn't. I, I didn't know that he was a diabetic. So it just like crept. That creeped up um I don't know where but um um I've always I've my son is a miracle child he's a lost miracle child for sure but I've always felt like I can reverse that but they say that type one diabetics are not able to reverse it but I I don't know there's something inside of me that I feel like I can reverse it but I have a question. Do type 1 diabetics go through dialysis? How does that work? Like, All right. So what, from my understanding, with type 1 diabetics, without making it complicated, the type 1 diabetics, there is a part of a type 1 diabetics pancreas that does not naturally secrete insulin. Insulin is like a key that opens up the cells so that your body can take sugar or glucose from the blood and that it could enter into the organs. And so when people are diabetic, it is because their body is not secreting enough insulin to open up the cells as a key. And so therefore the blood is overflowed with glucose now right. there are there your question was how many the people that are on dialysis they are not on dialysis because of diabetes okay they're on dialysis because they are undisciplined okay they're on dialysis because they lack the ability no let me change that they lack the discipline and the willpower to regulate their eating habits. Mm. So people yes. who are on dialysis um, deviate from the, the, from the recommended regimen. Just because your son is a diabetic, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us in the how to eat to live that diabetes can be controlled. Right. And right. so just because your son is diabetic it doesn't necessarily mean that he is doomed it doesn't necessarily mean that it is an end all and be all for him the best thing that you can do is to be a good example to him on how to eat to live and teach him how to regulate his diet naturally there are ways that your son can exercise and work out and through exercising, he can also reduce the amount of sugar that might be in his blood. Yeah. Through eating properly and fasting and abstaining, he could so also- he can fast? He's 11 years old. He, um, is, is it safe for him to, like, can I, can I do that with him? I'll say this to you. I don't want, I don't, I don't have enough, I'm, I'm not a medical doctor, right? right? 
And so mm -hmm. the medical professional, and matter of fact, if you find a medical professional trying to find a Muslim one, right? And so that medical professional will have to look at his labs, his lab work, and they have to design a regiment tailored for him. Why? Because his body is not, everyone's body is different. And so the, uh, 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 the design format for one person may not necessarily be for the next person because their labs are different. Yeah, he does mm. have that. He has a set, um, like everything he has, even uh, like what we got to uh, divide and subtract, like everything, like what is every time he checks his glucose. Right. Uh, See, yeah, with it, your yeah. son being a type one diabetic, his for anyone that's listening, <laughs> low sugar is more dangerous than high sugar. Right. Being hypo. Right. Hypo means low. Hyper means high. Being a right. hypo glide. Glide means sugar. Having high, when you hypo, which means low, low sugar, and hyper means high sugar. So when right. you're a hypoglycemic, it's actually more dangerous than someone yeah. that is hyperglycemic. So yeah. your son, you, you, he is, has to learn how to regulate, he has to, uh, uh, check his sugar every day, multiple yeah. times a day mm -hmm. in order to figure out where he is with his diet. But like I said, you have brilliant uh, medical professionals inside the nation of Islam that can help mm -hmm. him uh, regulate uh, that aspect of his diet to get him on track. I'm going to look into that. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, brother. I appreciate you it. Speak to Allah. Beautiful. Give him more, give her a warm round of applause. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. You know, <clears throat> I was sitting here looking at, you know, if you don't put God for, first in your life, none of this, this is just talk. This don't mean nothing to you. You could forget it. You had prayer and fasting where we don't play no games about being at one with Allah. We bring Brother Muhammad, Jacoby Muhammad, Brother Malcolm X, and Brother Jesse last week from Sister Nola Muhammad's family member. We bring people over here to fight the devil in you. We at war, man. We ain't over here just like some little Dr. Phil foolishness. No, we over here trying to kill a devil in your head. We are against Satan in this world. That's right. We're trying to help you, but you don't believe you in the fight. I'm talking to all my Facebook fam. You don't believe you in the fight because you won't fight. That's the greatest fighter person you can. I can be May. I can be Mayweather's record if ain't nobody gonna fight back and kill everybody. I'd be a hundred and oh. Yes, sir. Never had no resistance. The scripture says, resist the devil and the devil will flee from you. But in order for you to resist him, you're going to have to be amongst a group, a group of brothers and sisters that's about this life. That's about this fight. If you hang with nine broke friends, you're bound to be the tenth one. Oh. So you like, if you want to be broke, hang around nine more broke people. You will never get no money. Yes, sir. And the same thing with prayer and fasting. You could do it on your own. You ain't never been able to do nothing on your own. Nothing. When have you? You didn't go to public school and get none of them degree, them, them, them grades in that public school. I'm talking about none of the grades from kindergarten to eighth grade. None of it. You did it by yourself. You went to high school, you didn't do none of it by yourself. You went to college, you did nothing by yourself. You learned how to be a mechanic, an electrician, a plumber, a carpenter, a real estate investor, a stockbroker, a trade and commerce man. You never did that by yourself. So there is no way for you to do it by yourself. You're gonna need help. So here is the platform for you to get the help that you need. And bring your perfect self over here. 
<laughs> so we can show you how perfect you really are. Yes, sir. Oh, pray. Let's get let's give Brother Jacoby a warm round of applause. Away, brother, Thank you so much, Brother Jacoby. Be to Allah. You know, Thanks, in Deuteron in Deuteronomy, it says, then all the people of the earth will see that you are called by the name of the Lord. And they will stand in awe of you. You brothers and sisters on prayer and fasting, I stand in awe of you. I've been a part of the nation for since 2002 is when my flirting started. But for 20 years, no, 1992 is when our flirting started. But in since 2002 till now, I have never been awed by nobody in the nation. You ain't never awed me. I came out the belly to be a natural born killer in there when it come down to these life-giving teachers. So I never was awed by you. I was honored by you but I was never awed by you. I was awed by the minister. And the next group of people I've ever been awed by since the minister is you brothers and sisters on prayer and fasting. I am awed by you. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. You know, in Second Chronicles, man, this is a cold piece right here. He says in 637, and when they come to their sis in the land to which they were taken. Did you just hear what I just said to y'all? <laughs> you don't get it. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. He said, he said when they come to their senses. In the land in which they were taken, here in the hells of North America. And they repent and plead with you in the land of, the, of their captors, saying, we have sinned and done wrong, and we have acted wickedly. What land? You ain't talking about the dirt outside your house, is you? Sir, you talking about you the land? You the land. You the land, man. Have you not learned that you are the Asiatic black man, the maker, the owner, the cream of the planet Earth, gods of the universe? Have you not learned that the planet Earth was once called Asia? And the reason why you are called the Asiatic black man is because you are an extract of Asia and you walk around a little piece of Asia with the same water that you see in the seven seas running through your vein called blood. It's just chemically engineered to be this form of water. Don't you know that the flesh that you got is nothing more than the, the black mud that you was made out of? It's just chemically engineered so that it won't look so much like the earth. It will be manifested in a geometry or a calculus or trigonometry form of, of, of dirt. This is all you're looking at. The bone is the stone. The breath I hear, that you hear me speaking with is the wind that you say it's windy outside. It's just a, a, a microscopic form, a, a, a level of that wind. You a little earth running around here. He gonna heal your land. But he can't heal your land if you don't submit. I submit. And the minister just told you we must submit. If he knock, let him in. If you seek, you'll find. Man, come on and save your life, man. And don't wait to the last minute. I'm going to eat a couple more weeks. Then you had a massive heart attack. 
couple weeks later, we didn't had two believers, husband and wife, come over here. I'm joining. I'm joining. I got all kind of ailments in my body. It don't come from nothing but what put in your mouth. What you put in your mouth with your hand is what got you sick. And then he coming and he don't come. And next thing you know, they both die two weeks apart. They both go to the hospital at the same time. And they died six, seven days apart. Come on, man. We make a mockery of these teachings when we don't live it. You know, when I get in, get in some issues because of what my hands have wrought, you know what I do what I do? You know what I do with the nation? I disappear and they can't find me. Because I try to get as far away from the mother plane as I possibly can where I can solve my problems where I solve them better. Because I'm a soldier. I can solve the problem, but I don't want to be around the nation because I got, a, got myself in a jam. So I get away from you. But y'all are standing around here and dying right here in the nation. Make us look bad. Why don't you get the hell away from us, man? Get away from us, man. For you mess around and die over here in front of us and make us look bad. Because you don't want to fight. Get the hell away from us. Get away from us. Don't let us find you. Because you won't fight for your life and you mess around and die over here with us. We got 15 brothers that say, damn, y'all down with that. Why would I want to be around with y'all? Y'all some sickly people. Man, get the hell away from us if you're not going to practice these life-giving teachings, man. Get out of here, man. You don't want the word to make manifest. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. And the word became flesh. You don't even want to make it become flesh. And he it, and it dwelled amongst men. You don't want that to happen because you're not exercising to make it become flesh. You just want to be running around here like you smart. All these damn slides. Slide. Oh, slide oh, here. Slide. Oh. Slide. Slide. Get the hell out of here, man. These people not listening to us. Because I'm not going to listen to you. Because you're a hypocrite. Your blood pressure higher than mine. Good how to eat to live, boy. You got more diabetes than I do. Good how to eat to live, girl. You fornicate more than me. Good how, how to be, accept your own and be yourself, boy. The hell I don't want to be around you for. I can stay out here and eat till I just die. So if you ain't going to be right, then fall back. Because when you fall out and die, we be sitting right looking stupid. Then family members who ain't in the nation say, my brother just had a heart attack. He's been in FOI for 30 years. He's been in the nation of Islam. He hanging around, man. Now you got everybody, whole family was thinking about joining. And they said, man, he's the best thing we ever knew. My brother, he had a heart attack. What the hell I need going? It didn't help him. And he been trying to get us in there for 20 years. Come on, man. Just get the hell away, man. Well, I don't care if we knew we we dropped down to a thousand people. Better to have a thousand strong than 10,000 people who are weak. He said one. One. Learned man is harder on the devil than a thousand ignorant worshipers. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? I don't want to be mean to you, but if it comes down to you and the nation of Islam, you got to go. I'm just sorry to be the very bad news. I'm not your friend. If you're not FOI, if you're not in this thing to win it, then I'm going to push you out. But, but it's your life. It ain't mine. May Allah continue. Bless you all. Do I have anything else, sister? Wow, we covered a lot of ground today, sir. I don't even, this has been a whirlwind. Thank you. Um, Law Akbar, King, we love you. Praise, oh, be, to Allah. praise be to Allah. Oh, 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 I have a question. Oh, Hold on, we, Hold we'll on, take questions. Sir. We we did have um, a few more videos. I don't know if you read the scriptures already. I don't know if you want to do any more videos or not. 
what 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 other video did we have to close with? We have one more of the minister from yesterday. Yes, I want that. Let me ask Sister Rahima a question. What's your question, Sister Rahima? Sister Ali had a question also before her. Sister oh, Rahima. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? What's your question? Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Thanks for taking take, taking my question. Uh, I have a sister, a, a daughter who just just got uh, di uh, uh, diabetes, and a sister who's been on the on the thing mach machine for years. M my question is um, about the 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 low sugar. That's really scary. I saw my daughter with a bunch of candy, saying that her sugar was low. I, did I, I? I didn't quite understand what that means, but I hear that it's more. It's worse than the the high sugar. Can you explain that a little bit more, please, sir? Jacoby, are you there? Yes, sir. Um, so, a person that has low, when we refer to low sugar. That's just saying that, okay, your body has a natural balance. All right. And any time our body goes into its extremes, meaning that when it goes high, there's a reaction in the body. When it goes extremely low, there's a reaction in the body. So in terms of numbers, let's just think about it in terms of math. So there should be, be between 70 to 110, uh, well, some say 70 and 140 uh, grams, not grams, but I'm just using that for, for understanding, um, okay. grams of sugar in the blood, but don't go with grams. I'm just, for, for, for example, when the sugar is low, when that sugar is low, when that glucose goes really low, how does it go low? It goes low because if that person is not, this is a diabetic, if that person is a diabetic, you have to remember that if that person is not eating properly or not eating throughout the day, then that means that their sugar content in their blood is low. Now mm -hmm. watch this. In their blood, the sugar is low. And because they are diabetic, their pancreas excretes insulin. That insulin acts as a key to open up the cells so that the sugar could enter in from the blood into the cells. However, diabetics do not, for the most part, secrete insulin meaning that their body does not have the ability to open the cells up like a key so that the sugar can flow from their blood to their organs or to their cells. And so their cells are actually starving. You understand mm. what I'm saying? Their yes, cells sir. are starving because they cannot, the cells cannot get what the body demands or what the body needs. And so a person can go into what they, what is referred to as a diabetic coma because they're because the cells right. in the body is not getting enough sugar. And so that is often uh, worse, uh, worse because inside of sugar, sugar also to a large degree provides energy to the body. And so if you don't have enough sugar in the cells, then it, into the cells, then the cells can't function as they should function. And then that person begins to lose life force or energy where that person can go into a restless state or what is referred to as a coma. And so then they would have to intake some sugar in the form of mint, candy, or whatnot in order to bring their sugar level up back to normal. All right. Thank you. Does that make thank sense? You, thank you. Yes, sir. It makes a lot yes, of sense. Thank yes, you, sir. Uh, Appreciate it. Yes, ma'am. Um, Sister Ali, you have a question for him? Yes, sir. But I don't know. Uh, my son, he had a massive stroke. He's a diabetic and he's also on, on dialysis. He had a massive stroke about uh, two years ago. 
and it it uh infected his uh right side. He had on his um uh, head on his uh, left side, so it affected his right side. So I think it had something in his mind. It's kind of like you know it's not functioning like it should. And so I tried to um you know be an example to him that he needs to you know have a better diet and everything, but. He won't eat what I cook, you know, most of the time. He don't like, you know, the food that I cook. So I use have to make him like enchiladas and stuff like that because that's what he want to eat. And otherwise, he would eat anything but sandwiches. And so I just don't, you know, really know how to deal. He's, he's 55, six, 56 years old. He's a grown man. So, you know, I try to be an example for him, but it's just hard, you know, because he don't want to follow my diet, you know. And so it, I just run I'll say this. His problem, man, they know a lot of beneficent and merciful. May Allah bless people, bless and guide my tongue. His his problem is spiritual, ain't physical. Yes, it is. It ain't physical. It ain't food. It's probably spiritual. Since there has nothing to do with his problem is spiritual. Most people that get on dialysis, huh, they go through about four stages of depression. Sometimes, mm -hmm. some, some, sometimes they go through sadness. Then they go through denial. Then they go through anger. And then they go through a form of acceptance. And so sometimes mm -hmm. we have to understand where our loved ones are at uh, in that spectrum. So it's like Brother Malik said, you know, we, we, we talk about medicine. We talk about regulating the diet. But the central key that to help our people, the root of it is spiritual, and the root of it is binding, is feeding him spiritual food and connecting and binding him to Allah, where he can begin to see the possibility of regeneration and healing. Yes, sir. Allah, Allah. Yes, sir. We love true. you. Yes, we love you. That's Allah. beautiful. Before he had the stroke, you know, he was coming to the meetings, you know, he would come and he would stand up and accept the teachings. But now he don't listen to anything, you know, and I, I think it's a mainly due into the, it's due to the stroke because uh, I think he's not functioning. One side of his brain is not functioning like it should. I, I, I'm going to say this and I'm going to fall back. Uh, Donald Elijah Muhammad said that his words have life, light and power. And so yes. I've heard, talked to believers how even sometimes just listening to the minister's words or placing a, a placing something in proximity where he can just hear the minister's word, even in the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan's words, in those words itself is also healing. That's medicine right there for him, even right. beyond giving him anything physical. And so the way that, praise be to Allah, the way that we help to nurture him back to life is the first pillar of Islam is prayer and belief in Allah. So I think that if we start there with prayer and, and with trying to encourage them, because a lot of our brothers and sisters take dialysis as a death sentence for them. They look at it as a death sentence for them because it interrupts their life. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, for the rest of my life, I got to be on dialysis. I got to come when I don't want to come. Why? Because I don't come. The consequences is I'm going to die if I don't come to dialysis. Think about that. Think about that you are forced to do something all for the rest of your life. And the consequences of missing the treatment is that you cannot, you may not wake up the next morning, you'll die. And so the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said that Allah destroyed the impossible when he created himself out of triple darkness of space. And so the root of our problem, the root of his problem is spiritual and it's inspiring the spark of Allah and hope and give him vision where he can begin to regenerate himself with the belief in Allah. Yes, sir. Anyway, Thank, you. Thank you, brother. All praises be to Allah. Allahu Akbar. You know, in, uh, in Ezekiel, he says, my dwelling place will be with them. I will be their God and they will be my people. 
But only way you're going to get that done is if you submit to him. The messenger, the minister said the, only, the way you talk to God is through prayer and reading the Quran. How you gonna be? How you gonna dwell in you and you won't sacrifice? Yes, sir. How you gonna dwell in you? That don't even make good sense. Man. I mean, if you don't struggle and fight, I ain't asking you to fast three days a week. I ain't asking you to fast at all. You should fast. You should fast sometimes, somewhere, because you're not gonna make it. You ain't gonna get there. You. you you have no problem going to your nine to five job and you never miss. That's because your God is the God of this world. Teach. And your dedication is to the God of this world. Your dedication is not to the sovereign of the universe. Teach on polytheism. This is your God because you can't tell me that you can't be consistent because you're consistent when it's time to go to work. You're very consistent, but you have to be shown your face. And that's why you don't like Abdul Malik, because I show you your face. You more dedicated to the white man's world than you are to the God's world called NOI, FOI, MGT, Christian church. You ain't with none of this stuff, man. You, you're not with this stuff but the only way you're going to click on is if you continue to hear this type of teaching see i'm your best friend in the whole nation of islam outside of the minister malik is your best friend i'm talking to everybody in the nation he better yes, than anybody you ever had i bear witness because the boy, your your so-called best friend to eat jerk chicken with you you sit yes, pops sir. and won't even talk about you. That's yeah, your best true, friend. Doctor. Speak that truth. That's your dog. The one who said he'll shoot somebody with you. Yeah, he'll shoot somebody with you and tell you tell on you like some Negro, like any other Negro will. Because he can't even curb his diet. So you have a rat next to you. Hmm. I'll kill that nigga for you. The feds put the right pressure on him. He'll be like, Knocking on your door. This is the federal agent. Come on out, put these gloves, these braces on. I'll tell you about it when you get to the, to the station. Mm -hmm. You got to be careful who your friend is. Your friend going to be your rat, your confidential informant. Because when you put that pressure on them, they can't even stop eating, bro. Mm -hmm. Just think, all they got to do is take you in a bullpen and don't feed you for a day or two. And you'll tell on everybody. Lord have mercy. Sir. You knew? Well, a greater man than you did it. A greater man sold his birthright for a bowl of soup. <laughs> so, <laughs> why you have to go there? He sold, sold a birthright for a bowl of soup. Yeah, he did. What the hell? And he didn't have a white man in him. <laughs> what the hell are you going to do? Oh my! So here for both. Lord have mercy. Or I'm telling you, you better start practicing. Seek the Lord while He may be found. Seek Him while He's near. Or He gonna or He gonna sink your battleship. And it's sad that it's gonna go like that. But you know, I hope you all got a lot out of this because I did. I got a lot out of this. Absolutely. And you got to focus on. Yes, sir. You got to focus. If you focus on Allah and the messenger, you can't lose. But when you focusing on one another around here, these people around here, you are you are you are all time loser because you you break down your momentum. It's like me racing. If I'm running a hundred yard dash, my focus is on the on the on the end. The moment I look to the left to see who she is or who he is, you're going to look up and you're going to be in last place because you're focusing on the wrong thing. And you, What did Michael J Jackson say? I'm starting with the man in the what? Man in the mirror. In the mirror. 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 What, the what, what the minister say? 
self improvement or all y'all improvement? Self improvement. Self improvement. Self -improvement. Yes. So, improvement is the basis for community development but when you get to looking at everybody else you make yourself a big head i'm a big head nigga in here what you doing what's happening over there who who what's that oh my god what's that you gotta be out your mind you losing your <laughs> mind and you ain't even there yet you're not perfected listen if if, if y'all knew if y'all knew how serious i was about these life-giving teachings if you don't know by now, shoot, you don't, you ain't gonna never know. You ain't gonna never know. But you need to stay focused on Sister Alicia, focus on Alicia. Sister Majida, focus on Majida. Yes, Brother right. Amistad, focus on Amistad. That's yes, right. John Tika, focus on John Tika. Stop focusing on other people. Oh, I thought. Because, because you get set up like that. You get things. set up. You can get set up and get set up and be you know, and lose everything you had. So all praises be to Allah. Once again, it's been a success. And you're going to help a thousand, thousands of people with this. But remember, you got two ways. He said, I put before you the two conspicuous ways. You can go this way. Or you can go that way. Which way are you going to go? If you go that way to the left, you're going to be hollering, whoa, if I had only taken away with the messenger, if I only had taken one as such a friend. Mm. But if you go the right way, you'll go through a struggle because Allah says you got to go through the fire. That's why prayer and fasting is titled as the fury furnace. And many people come in here, they get burnt up and leave out here with their eyebrows burnt off. Thomas on, ooh, them niggas ain't nothing over there. Why is this you with your eyebrows? It was hot in there. Ooh, they fall out of the Oh, God, damn. Oh, I'm not over there with Malik. I don't want to be around nobody. Ooh, ooh. Sitting over there getting fat, sick, cancer, and sitting over there just talking. A mess. <laughs> Everybody go in. And, and it's one thing. You know what's a good thing? If you come to prayer and fasting and you leave with the principles of the messenger. Yes, sir. I kept praying and I kept fasting. That's right. And I never stopped. Then Allah had another path for you. And I salute. But when you leave here and you no longer pray and fast, the fury furnace burnt all of your little eyebrows off and your little hair. And you broke up out of here because it you didn't wait for it to purify you. You just couldn't take the heat and you broke out running out of here and, and you ran right to a plate of jerk chicken. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't lost your life. But all praises be to Allah. I ain't can we play the medicine? Can we play the medicine? The last we did the honorable minister. Oh, the honorable minister. <laughs> the honorable <laughs> minister. <laughs> <is fair. laughs> we, thank we thank him for all that he's done <laughs> for us. Thank us for wake. He, I thank him for waking me up. You know, I thank him for being such a great man. I'm telling you, man, this is a great man. At 89 years old, he still comes out to see what the brothers and the believers are doing at mm. 89. That's right. Still fighting for us. Obliterated his prostate. That's what they said. Obliterated it. Come on with the minister. Is, that, is this John Tika's? Yes, sir. It is? Hold on one second. Jantika said it ain't hers. No, that's not mine. Whose is that? That was Sister Lisa's. The one that starts when he prayed and fast. What, did we play Jantika's yet? No, no, sir. Play, play hers. Yes, sir. It was one second, family. Well, 
It's been an eventful night. We thank Allah for blessing you. Yeah, this, 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 this is a heck of a, this heck this heck form. Of a this, you, you lit it on fire tonight, brother. We thank Allah for the minister raising you up degree by degree. All as you should have lit it up tonight. Praise. All Allah. praises be to Allah. We fight you. Y'all look good too. Y'all like y'all over there with your popcorn, just taking it all in. <laughs> brother Malcolm, brother Jacob, who they did it with brother Abdul Malik. We thank Allah for each one of you all. I need you to pray for me, man. I need you to care for me, man. I need you to want me to win. I need to know where I'm at. We need to be raised. And even if y'all are not religious, you still got to make a religious move on fasting and start doing some type of fasting in your life. If you don't, Allah will rip you fast and put you in a chair because your blood is going to kill you if you don't get it cleansed up. The Quran says fasting is prescribed to you as it was prescribed for those before you. And you know what, sisters and brothers? If we would just stop eating just for three days, drink water, good clean water, but then stop eating food. You know, sometimes you got to get on your knees and moan and pray. You've got to get up in the morning from the sun up to the sundown, and you've got to push your plate away. They also have made the decision that they want to give me a kidney transplant as soon as possible because I came in there and I'm, I'm putting religion for I'm putting my God first. I'm fasting. I'm not eating toxic stuff to me. I, I, I'm, I'm dealing with nutritionists who's teaching me stuff that I cannot eat that are toxic, that cause toxicities in my body. So I'm pushing my plate away. I'm, I'm fasting. I'm praying. And I know to get screened. The Texas Kidney Foundation reports that 90% of Americans don't know they have chronic kidney disease, and it's most common among African Americans and Hispanics. Black and Latinos. I mean, we, we, our diets are terrible, and that's why we have the problem that we have. And it was very important for me, man, because I've been through it, and I wouldn't want, I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. We have 800 new people go on to uh, dialysis every year. Tiffany Jones Smith says the foundation is testing 8,000 people this year for kidney disease. And the reason being is that diabetes, hypertension, cardiovascular disease, and obesity are the four leading causes of kidney disease. You know, you see your bloodline, your lifeline going through a machine, you know, and that was you know hard i felt that you know it's very important to let people know my story yes sir my mother um suffered with uh, high blood pressure and um she was on dialysis for two years two and a half years in the beginning and um she was in need of a kidney transplant but um by a lot of grace uh my father um volunteered to give her a, uh, one of his kidneys and they went through the testing and my father tested and he was um, a match for her and he donated his kidney to my mom and my mom was able to keep her kidney for 20 years so by law's grace she was um dialysis free for 20 years and didn't have to go on the national registry for the um, kidney yes sir oh, 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 are you listening to this Wow. The green oh, she gave her 20 more years on her life. The brother is 57 years old. A kidney would give him 20 more years before he needs a man. That's a long time. Did y'all hear this? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Fasting is 
a prescription from the supreme doctor God himself now the question is this which dialysis do you want to take you in the valley of decisions right now because you're going to take one or the other whether you like it or not I need you to pray for me. I need you to care for me. I need you to want me to win. Oh, baby. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Sister, um, Sister Sandra, close us out. Praise be to Allah. Prayer time. Praise. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah ar-Rabbil alamin. Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Maliki al-Madi. Ia can no ia can a stain. Ecta Latina and no amta alayim. Where in Mandubi alayim? Walado. Here. Allah, 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 Allah,